responsibility to self and to others, and we'll learn how people often feel more responsible to others than, than we do to ourselves in, in understanding this piece of Gomorrah, a wonderful piece of Gomorrah, and may our learning and afterwards our davening bring about the kind of nisim that we have been seeing and the Mirz Hashem will continue to see over the coming days and weeks. So we're still talking about this mecha'ah, this, uh, th- this objection. Uh, somebody occupies a, your property and if within three years you haven't lodged an objection, then there's an assumption that this person possesses the property and that it belongs to him because if you would not have the assumption is he bought it from you. If you would not have sold it to him, you would surely have objected sometimes in the three years. Ask the Gemara, what happens if he gets two people together and he says, I'm making a formal mecha, making a formal objection to the occupation of uh, Steve of my property and I'm making the condition is, but don't tell Steve that I've made this mecha. When the time comes, I'll go to, to the, where the property is and I'll take Steve to Bezdin and then we'll deal with it then as long as I've got proof that I made a mecha that I challenged. What kind of mecha is that? You're saying to the person, don't tell, don't tell the occupier. What kind of challenge is that? Rav Papa lo lachrina I'm not saying to you, to, to the witnesses, don't tell anybody. I'm just saying, don't tell Steve. He's going, they're going to tell other people, as we t- talked yesterday, people talk. And if, they, and if they tell other people, it will get to Steve. So we have a machlokis, Rav Zvid and, and Rav Papa. What happens if they say to him, oh, yeah, we, are, we hear you're challenging, but we're not telling Steve. We're not getting involved with this. We're not telling Steve what's happened here. That's not a mecha. They've told him that they're not going to report it back to the occupier himself. Why would that be a good mecha? Surely he has to do another mecha. <laughs> but it doesn't matter what they say. The fact is they're going to speak. As we discussed yesterday, people don't connect in order to share information. They share information in order to connect. It's natural for people to want to connect. And the way humans connect is by sharing information. That's how we connect with one another. What happens if he says, don't tell anyone? I'm telling you this. I'm objecting to the fact that Steve is sitting in my property, but you don't tell anybody. He said, don't tell anybody what kind of mecha is that. And Rav Papa doesn't interfere. Rav Papa accepts it. So that case where he says, don't tell anybody, that is not a valid mecha. That's not a valid objection. And therefore the chazaka will work. So now Steve comes and says, but I've sat here for three years. I come along and say, but Steve, I've got two witnesses that I challenged you. And Steve will say, yes, but you told the witnesses to not tell anybody in the world. How could I even know that you challenged me? So I haven't kept my documents. I've thrown them out. I didn't think there was any, any reason to, to be challenged. What happens if they say we won't tell anyone? Now Rav Pop is the one who says, no, up till now I've said news gets out. But here they've said they're not going to tell anybody in the world. Rav Rav Yeshua goes so far as to say, They will forget that they made that undertaking. And sooner or later, it'll come out of their mouths. If you've told somebody something, it will get out, no matter what. However, we, Rav Yehuda Bered, Rav Yeshua, doesn't object to the earlier one where he says, don't tell anybody in the world. So again, if he says to the person, don't tell Steve, don't tell the occupier, go to Machlokas, Rav Zavid, and Rav Papa. If he says, don't tell anybody in the world, then everybody agrees that this is no mecha. If they say, we will never tell anybody in the world, says Rav Hunabred, Rav Yeshua, eh, they will. Sooner or later, it'll come out of their mouths. People speak. So for some reason, it seems we're worried that he will, they will speak when they made the undertaking, but we're not worried that they will speak when he imposed the, the limitation. 
If he says you are not allowed to tell anybody in the world, we trust that they'll keep the confidentiality. If they say we won't tell anybody in the world, we don't trust. Says the Rashbam in the name of Rabbeinu Hananel, and that's the halacha, that's also how the Rif Paskins, that the, the, all these other cases we say the news is going to get out, no matter, what you, no matter what you say, excepting for one. That is when the ma'ar'er, when the object, objector tells the witnesses, I'm objecting to Steve being in my property, and don't tell anybody in the world, and they accept that, there we can trust that the confidentiality won't get out. Why? Says the Nemukiyosav, It depends whether there's an Isur. If you tell me not to tell anybody in the world, then you've made it a secret, you've made it a sod. If you've told me don't tell so-and-so or don't tell so-and-so, then you're telling me something with certain conditions attached to it. And we're concerned that I'm going to ignore those conditions. But if you tell me a secret, you're saying I'm telling this to you and you're not permitted to tell anybody. That we trust you'll keep. Why? Because it's an issue. You're not going to be over an issue. You're not going to transgress the law of the Torah. Because it says in the Torah, we learn in, in Gemara in, in Gemara Yuna, from the fact that Hashem says, Hashem elav mo'ed lemor. When Hashem says to Moshe, it, the Torah says, and God said to Moshe in the oh, Moed, in the Mishkan, lay more, and gave him permission to communicate further to the people of Israel. That's what lay more means. So when it says in the Torah, Hashem said, lay more, it means I'm giving you permission to say it further. So you see, you need permission. Unless the, the, unless the speaker gives you permission to speak about it, it's a sword. And if it's a sword, you can't be, it's a secret, you can't reveal it. So that's how the Nebuchadnezzar Yosef seems to learn that there's an Indian of Isur. And since there's an Indian of Isra, there's a question of a Torah's law. This is not just between human beings. If I tell you, don't tell other people, don't tell them, or you say, I'm, you're not going to tell, you don't tell the occupier, or you say, I'm not going to tell anybody in the world, that's all you undertaking, you saying, words come, words go. We've learned already, words are cheap. But if there's an Isra Torah, if I classify this as a secret, I say to you, I'm going to tell you a secret. Please don't share it with anybody. From that moment onwards, there's an Isodor so there's a Torah prohibition of revealing that secret to anybody else. Breaking that confidence becomes an, an Isodor of the Torah. It becomes a transgression of the Torah. It's an important thing to know. One has to check. Sometimes people tell you something, uh, particularly in, in professional situations, and you sometimes have to say, is this something that I may share with so-and-so, with anybody, or, or not? Because if, if not, if it's a secret, if it's given to you in total confidence, there's an Isidore Isa, so there's a Torah law prohibiting you from sharing it with anybody. Now, what's interesting is, is, is a sefer called Alias de Rabbeinu Yoyna. Rabbeinu Yoyna was a f- cousin of the Ramban, living, living in Spain, but he, also, he learned with the Ballet Toysfus in Europe, so he's very important. He lives in Spain, he's the Rebbe of the Rashbo. So the Rabbeinu Yoyna, a very, very important Rishon, What's also interesting about Rabbeinu Yona, he was also a Baal Musa. Rabbeinu Yona wrote the, the Talmide de Rabbeinu Yona on Brochus. We've got a parish on Masech de Brochus by Rabbeinu Yona, written by his Talmidim, which is very Musardic uh, in a sense. It's, it's both, there's a lot of Yerushimayim, a lot of, it's, it's, about, it's on Masech de Brochot, it's on the laws of, between man and God, but there's also a lot of Musa in it. And he wrote the Shari Tshuva. Our classical work on, on Tshuva was written by the Rabbeinu Yona. So Rabbeinu Yona is interesting, and we didn't have his work. He wrote a sefer called Aliyot Rabbeinu Yona on, on many Masechtas of Shas. And the Aliyot is because at the end of every sugya, he says, Allah biyadenu. What emerges is the following. He, at the end of the sugya, he summarizes the halachi conclusions from that su- sugya. So it's called Aliyot de Rabbeinu Yona, the Aliyot, the conclusions of Rabbeinu Yona. And we didn't have it on, on Bova Basra. We had quotations of it in various forms, but we didn't have the sefer till a very interesting person, Moshe Herschler, found the manuscripts and published the manuscripts uh, only a couple of decades ago. Uh, Rabbi Moshe Herschler was born in our neighboring town. He was born in Kfar Saba in the 1920s. And then he went to learn in Yerushalayim with Rabbi Zalman. And in the Melchemet Atzmot, in the War of Independence, he fought in a gedud called, in an army unit called Gedud Bnei HaYeshiva. 
the yeshiva, the yeshiva boys gedud, the yeshiva boys unit. You know, we get involved in all this thing, the yeshiva boys in the army and they can't and they never have. It's not true. There's a Talmud of Rebisa Zalman, a very great Talmud Chochem, who fought in the War of Independence in the Gedud Bnei Yeshiva. And he published Aliyot the Rabbeinu Yonah. And what's interesting in the words, as I understand the Rabbeinu Yonah, he's different from the Mekhi Yosef. Because look how he says it. He says here, Shaharei Kemosod Masalahem. It's like a sod. He doesn't say sod. He says it's kemosod. The Nuik Yosef says, "Kivan de derech sod masalahem." He he communicated it as a secret. Rabbi Yonah says, "It's kemoso. It's keilu. It's like a sod." Ve'ein lahem legalot sod ache. He doesn't say va'asu lahem legalot sod ache. He said there's an ethical prohibition. This is an ethical issue. It's not really a sword because of the way it's given over. It's not a proper, it's not a real secret. But he told them something in confidence. If somebody tells you something in confidence, it's just not the right thing to do. Rabbi Yunus seems to say it's not because of an issa of the Torah, a prohibition of the Torah. It's because of an ethical responsibility of integrity. And that helps us because if we go back to, to the Namuke Yosef, who says this is an Isidor Isa, you're not allowed to reveal this according to the Torah. And what happens when they say, you know, we will not tell anybody about this. We will not reveal this to anybody. Is that not an issue of the Torah? You're not allowed to. You're not allowed to break your word. Sheirit Yisrael lo yasu avla v'lo yedabru chazav. The Yenovitz Fanya says very clearly, we're not allowed. We use this in the Gemara often. We're not allowed to say anything that we're not going to fulfill. And, we, and once we've said it, we've got to fulfill it because we've got to. We're not, we're not allowed to be mishane mediburo. If you've said something, you can't do differently. That's also Nisador Isa. So if we're looking at why are these two cases different, when the Ma'ar Er, when the challenger says, I forbid you to tell anybody, we trust, they never will. When they say, we won't tell anybody, we don't trust. If we say like the Namukhi Yosef, the reason is because breaking a confidence is an Isidor Isa, well, breaking your own word is also an Isidor Isa. What does that help? No, says Rabbi Niyun, it's not because it's an Isidor Isa. It's because if somebody is given to you, to you in confidence, it's not right to break the confidence. If you say yourself, I won't tell anybody, you can change your mind. That, from an ethical perspective, we're not talking about the, the Isidore Isa, from an ethical perspective, you say and you, and you change your mind. It's not even changing your mind. What we're talking about here is love adate. Do you just forget about it? You don't forget about an Isidore Isa, I understand, the Namaki Yosef. If you treat it as a prohibition of the Torah, you won't forget about it. And then we had the question, but even if it's your own word, surely you'll forget about it. This isn't the Mickey Yosef, your own word. It's a, that's a prohibition of the Torah, which you created yourself. It wasn't given to you. It wasn't imposed. And if you created it, you can forget. The way the Rabbi Yonah learns, it's even better. So Rabbi Yonah says, no, this is not about an Isidor Isa. You can forget an Isidor Isa too. And then it's, then it's a shogi. You can just forget. The, what's important is if somebody tells you something in confidence, you don't forget that. That's something you bear in mind. Every time you're about to share that information, you remember. But I told this, this person gave it to me in confidence. I can't, I can't share it. However, if it's something that I've said myself, that's not that, that strong an ethical obligation. And therefore, it's easy for me to forget it. I might, uh, I might in fact, forget what I, what I said I would do. In conclusion, there's a very interesting machlokes shach and tzosa The The machlokes is, so I get two witnesses, and I say to them, I'm challenging Steve's occupation of my field. Don't tell anybody. They go and they tell Steve. And they don't tell him that I said don't tell anybody. So now Steve ought to know that there's a challenge. Because all he heard was that I challenged. He didn't hear the second part. He didn't hear that I messed the challenge up by restricting it. He just heard I made a challenge. Says the shach. Steve still has to keep his documents, and if Steve hasn't got documents, then we're going to take the field away from him because he should have kept them. Says the Tzachos no. The fact is, this is not a challenge. And you remember from Tosfus, we learned everything starts with the quality of the challenge. The challenge has to be a strong challenge, and then you can say you should have kept your documents. But the issue is the challenge. If I tell somebody I'm challenging Steve's occupation of my field, but don't tell anybody in the world, then I don't want it to get out. If I don't want it to get out, it's not a serious challenge. And the fact that I'm restricting 
the communication of this challenge means I'm actually nullifying, I'm voiding the challenge altogether. And this wasn't a challenge to start with. If I didn't challenge, in fact, I voided the challenge, then it's a kind of like, we call it an anan sahadi. It's the kind of thing we can see. It's as if we have witnesses to say, I never challenged Steve. But I did. I did it in front of two witnesses. Yes, but I gave them such a restriction that it makes it an invalid challenge. The fact that we now know that I did not, I deliberately didn't challenge Steve, must be because I really did sell it to him. And the fact that Steve doesn't have documents, even though he heard that I challenged, so it doesn't really matter, because we as the base didn't know that there's, a stro there's strong evidence pointing in the direction that I did sell the field. Otherwise, I would have wanted the challenge to get out uh, to, to Steve, whether directly or indirectly. And, and that's how the Ktsos the, HaKoshin uh, concludes it. So once again, looking at the, the power of, of challenge, uh, the challenge has to be a challenge that is capable of getting out eventually to the occupier himself, even if the challenger says don't tell the occupier, but he allows him to speak to other people, it will get out because that's what happens, news gets around. If he says don't tell it to anybody, we assume, according to the, the Rabbeinu Yonah, that the ethical responsibility to others is so strong if I myself say, I won't tell anybody, you can trust me, we, know, we, don't, we don't trust. People forget the, what, what they've undertaken. But if somebody else has told me, I'm telling this to you in confidence, that it's, it's part of human nature, says Rabbi Yoyno, the great psychologist, the great Baal Musa, who understood how human beings work. And he's saying, if somebody else has told you something in confidence, you don't forget that. You always remember and you respect that because we feel more responsible to others often than we do to ourselves. It's a kind of a pity. What would it be if we could be responsible to ourselves as well? And that's why there's such a thing as neder. Why do you need a neder? If you say you're going to give stocker, why do you have to make a neder? Why do you have to make an oath? You said you, said you would, just stick by it. People forget what they said they would do. People forget that they, that they, uh, what they say. People say to you, see you later. Has anybody ever said that to you? you know, and then they forget and they never see you again. I mean, we don't take what we say seriously. But if I say to you, can we meet later on, and you say, yes, sure, that's different. When we impose a, 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 a condition on another person, we tend to take, take it seriously. When we make our own conditions, we don't take it seriously enough and we don't follow up on we, what we ourselves have undertaken.